time constraints. Can I also just request that all the kiddies please uh, move down to the kiddies library downstairs? All the kiddies? We'll see you uh, down there a bit later on. All the kiddies? So can we please settle down? Um, colleagues, we, we've got a bit of time constraints, so we're going to be very, very brief. Um, my, my name is Vincent Campbell. I'm the executive director responsible for community development in the city of Johannesburg. Um, I know sometimes it's very difficult with these masks to identify people. Um, so you might see me for the first time, but you've seen me a lot. Um, so, so this is me. Um, so, so I'll be the, the program director. So the first part of the of this morning's, um, or this afternoon's activities was to, to do the ribbon cutting. So we're now moving into the formal part of the, of the, of the proceedings and I will, I will lead that uh, conversations. Um, but maybe before we start, um, would you please allow me to just acknowledge our, our guests, special guests. Uh, let me start off by inviting our, our very energetic mayor, um, Councillor Jolidi Matongo. Thank you, sir, and you're welcome. And thank you for always supporting community development. We, we appreciate it. Likewise, my MMC, MMC Margaret Arnolds. Welcome, ma'am. And then we've got uh, a number of MMCs joining us today, and we are very delighted to have you here. I'm going to start with Councillor Paul Morane. Uh, MMC Morane is the MMC for Environment and Infrastructure Services. We also have MMC Makuba, who is the MMC for Transport. Uh, MMC, welcome. And then we've got, um, I, I, Maria, they used to call you the breadwinner. <laughs> the first time I saw you, I just heard breadwinner, breadwinner. But now there's a new breadwinner. <laughs> <It's laughs> so okay, no, 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 that's fine. But uh, MMC in Fikwe, um is the MMC for finance uh, in the city. Welcome, MMC. Um, any other MMCs that I may miss? I think that's, I think that's it. Um, let me also welcome, obviously, the, our host, Councillor Brenda Dami. Ma'am, you're welcome. Thank you for hosting us today. Um, then um, our city manager, Mr. Floyd Brink. Thank you, sir. We know you're a very busy man, but thank you for taking time out to come and join us. You are welcome. Let me also acknowledge our regional director, Mr. Salomi Ngubeni. Salomi, where are you? Oh, yeah, sorry. Yes, Salomi. So you are welcome, Salomi. Uh, to this particular occasion. Um, also, um, um, we've got the director for libraries in the Gauteng Department of, of Sports, Recreation, Arts and Culture, Ms. Elizabeth Mbata. We've got the director for libraries in the city, Nabuntu Mpendulo. I think we all know her. There she is, to my right, your left. Um, I think also just um, my departmental staff, um, you are welcome, you are acknowledged. Um, what committee members and the public at large? Um, so, so you are welcome to this particular occasion, uh, colleagues. Um, this occasion being the opening or the launch of the, of the Nordgesag Library. Um, the intention of today's launch is to get us to begin to use the facility. That is the intention. It is to operationalize the Nordgesag Library for our youngsters within this particular area. So there's no other purpose to this thing. It's just to do exactly that. The facility has been standing idle for a, for a number of years, and it is in our intention to get it, to get it utilized by yourselves. There's a huge need in, in this particular community around this facility, so we are going to then open the facility um, um, uh, so that we can begin to use it. I just want to check Councillor Dami. Before we get into the program, Mayor, um, I think 
I'm not sure whether this, this you've uh, nominated somebody to open with a prayer. Just to, to, to bless the proceedings. Pastor? Pastor, can you please come, come to the podium and just open the proceedings? Thank you, Pastor. So after the opening prayer, um, we will then go straight into the program, colleagues. Like I said, we've got time constraints, but let me allow the pastor to come in and, 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 and bless the occasion. Pastor? Where, where's the pastor? <laughs> let's, let's, let's get the pastor to come quickly. Alhamdulillahi <laughs> Wali umi wali abi wali zaija tu wal abni hi wal muslimin wal sunban wal mukmini wal mukmina yuma yakum husak Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana wa fil akhirah hasana wa qina adhab an-nar wa qina adhab al-kabr wa qina adhab al-khash Rabbana amana faghfir lana warhamna wa anta khayrur rahimin samina wa atawna ghufran laka Rabbana wa ilaykal masir Inna Allah wa malaikati yusallu nabi ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu sallu alayhi wa sallimu taslima Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ashabi wa barik wa salim. As-salawatu wa salamu alayka ya Rasulullah wa salam alayka ya Sayyidina Khibibala. Bifalika dhaum fi ya subhana kalau matakhiyatun fi ya salam. Wa akhira wa nalhamdulillah ya Rabbil Alamin ar-Rahmatika ya Arhamar Rahimin. Thank you, thank you Pastor. Maybe before we proceed colleagues, can I request that maybe we take a second or so on um, in terms of self-meditation, uh, so that we can then just reflect on on this particular day. It is a, a momentous occasion within this particular community, so let's maybe uh, 10 seconds or so. Let's just close our eyes and then uh, have a bit of self-meditation and self-reflection. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I think we are blessed now. Uh, the facility is blessed in MC. Um, it is a blessed community. So um, everything will be fine. So um, like I said, um, colleagues, we do have a bit of time constraints. I'm going to call immediately um, on the member of the mayoral committee uh, responsible for environment and infrastructure services. Um, I, I think you can see, colleagues, our MMCs and our mayor they are all on the ground every single day. He was complaining to me now, Mayor, to say, you know, he doesn't understand, he's in his boots, but other councillors are, are dressed very fancily. So I said to him, well, that's it's your colleagues. <laughs> so, Councillor Poor, without any delay, please come and do the opening and the welcome, sir. Thank you. <coughs> Thank you, uh, Executive Director. Uh, Mr. Vincent Campbell, uh, ED for Community Development. Let me greet the Executive Mayor, uh, Councillor Jolie D. Matongo, who also comes from Soweto, born in Soweto. Uh, MMC Arnold, MMC Makuba, MMC Mfikwe, our, our host, Councillor Dami. Um, all the city officials that are here today and the community members that are here today. Um, I always say Region D is the most important region in the city of Johannesburg. And I'm actually privileged to be deployed to Region D with uh, Councillor Makub. 
Councillor Arnold, so where two has over two million population out of the 5.4 million, 5 million in the city of Johannesburg. So almost 50% are in Region D. So where two, Region D has almost 38 wards. There's no region that has more than 20 wards. That shows how important this region is, uh, executive mayor. And I'm delighted that today I'm here to welcome you to Region D. I know that uh, you are born here. You are from here, uh, not Zimbabwe, as people have say, uh, are saying. Uh, it is difficult to welcome a person that grew up in Soweto. But I want to save time and uh, welcome you to the launch of Nur Khaseh Public Library and Library and Information Services Digital Youth Skills Program. But I also want to highlight that this event would have more than 3,000 people if we had no COVID. Due to the regulations, we had to make it small so that we comply. And uh, I know community members might be unhappy that they are not invited. We spoke with uh, Councillor Dami. We said to Councillor Dami, once the regulations have been eased, we'll have another function where the community can be introduced to the library properly. But bear with us. We're hoping on Sunday the president will ease the regulations. But I want to emphasize that uh, the executive mayor today was at the uh, FNB Stadium launching uh, a COVID site. And I want to urge all of you, please go and vaccinate. If we all vaccinate, there will be a time that we will not be able to, we will not wear masks. We'll go back to our normal lives. I have vaccinated. I never got sick. I actually vaccinated twice. Took Pfizer jab twice. I never got sick. So do not be alarmed that people say you get sick when you vaccinate. Actually, they tell you before they vaccinate you what ailments do you have so that they can advise you. But they also tell you that you might feel sickerish because a vaccine, a COVID vaccine, has an element of COVID in it. So they put COVID, but COVID that will protect you from COVID that kills. So I want to urge, of you, urge all of you to make sure that you vaccinate. Uh, FNB Stadium is open, uh, city manager. FNB is open, you can pass there on your way home to go and vaccinate. With this few words, you are welcome. Thank you. Thank you, um, Councillor Morane. Um, maybe just to amplify the point, um, I think our current live reality is still COVID-19, colleagues. Um, that's the unfortunate situation, and, and it is our intention to come back and have a huge community event uh, around this particular facility. I think you'll see over the next few weeks, we'll open facilities, of course, it can't be that facilities are, st are standing idle and closed whilst people have a need for those facilities. So we'll continue to open these facilities so that people can start using them. But it is our intention post um, this COVID uh, pandemic that we come back and, and have a proper celebration around this particular facilities. I think having said that, I think my, ne my next task um, is, to, is to welcome, um, I always call her my MMC. You know, people will tell me, she's not yours, she's an MMC. <laughs> But she's the MMC, um, she's the custodian and steward, um, it's under her stewardship that this particular function is taking place today. Um, you know there's a saying that says dynamite comes in small packages. I hope she doesn't mind me saying that, Mr. Mayor. But she's, she is a personification of that notion. Um, she's, she's dynamite and we, we, we flourish under her leadership. So without, um, I can speak for the whole day about my MMC. So let me call on, on Councillor Margaret Arnolds come and address us. MMC? Yeah, it's fine. No, it's okay. Thank you. Good afternoon. 
afternoon, everybody. <coughs> Program Director, Vincent Campbell. You haven't said to everybody that I was your Sunday school teacher. So, yeah. That's why he wants to pray when he sees me, because he knows I taught him to pray. Executive Mayor Jolidi Matongo, Mayor of the People. MMC is present. If there are councillors present, you're welcome. Director of Community Development, Mr. Vincent Campbell. My acting director of Community Development, Moikete, welcome. We, we ran this race when I came in. You remember, North Khasakh was always on the list. The city manager, Floyd Brink, Councillor Dami, who sounds my haunt, Ekazi. Yeah, Region G is big. It's big. But I don't think it's bigger and it's more problem. Region D is big. But I don't think it's as big and as problematic as Region E. That's another region. <laughs> and I'm deployed to Region E. The opening of this library, welcome to the community. You are the most important people because you are going to utilize this library more than anybody else. The opening of the Nwerthusaf Library coincides with what UNESCO has recognized as International Literacy Day. This year, it's celebrated under the theme, Literacy for a Human-Centered Recovery, Narrowing the Digital Divide. We all know some of us were born during the time of Tokoloshi and not during this time. You that are the 2000s and others will understand when we speak about the digital divide. Out of 54 African countries, South Africa is currently top three in terms of literacy. And then we thought South Africans are stupid. Over a period of 10 years, 2009 to 2019, the adult illiteracy rate fell from 19.2% to 12.1%. This saw an increase of 7.1% in literate adults and youth within the country. With the fast-growing digital world we live in, and it's very difficult for us, we have to try to compare with the five-year-olds that better the computer can be used. South Africa endeavors to equip communities with basic literacy. The Library and Information Systems, LIS, Directorate of the City, recognizes that different members of the community prefer reading in different media. As such, we are promoting reading and literacy using print and electronic media. Today's youth, and it's evident, today's youth prefer smart devices, which can sometimes be dangerous, hence a concerted effort to provide online information resources. The library has been su subscribing to various electronic resources, e-books, e-journals, e-newspapers, e-references, sources to enable readership beyond these walls. Our main vision for the city's libraries is universal and equitable access to information. Thus, we want to open, and we're opening it today here. The digital transformation in Johannesburg libraries. Since 2015, LIS, through its e-learning program, has embarked on digital transformation to position the library's changing role in society. Before we used to go to the library just to study and, to, and, and have sanity and be secluded from everybody else, but today you can do much more. You can come, you can read the newspaper, you can Google whoever you want to, and that is what is good. The program has, however, endured numerous challenges, but through the Directorate's determination 
And in this, we must say thank you very much to Sis Nobuntu. She's passionate about the libraries and, and how the libraries are progressing. It has become a creative force through collaborative partnerships. The e-learning in libraries is not just about online learning. It's about the support provided by libraries through electronic resources such as e-books, e-journals, and computer, tablets, facilities such as e-learning classrooms, training on how to access electronic information through the provision of free Mahala internet. LIS has also supported various digital literacy training programs for communities, focusing on basic digital skills to intermediate level, levels by partnering with NGOs like Fundas, Literacy, or companies such as Google Essay. We also have Google Essay, and that, that's a beautiful program. Microsoft and IBM. LIS is currently procuring more ICT tools to support the digital transformation program. The objective is to provide hybrid library services to cater for all communities, for all the community's needs, enhancing the virtual library services while strengthening our traditional services. COVID has taught us that everything is done virtual. We don't need to see each other face to face as the warm body, but we can be there, we can communicate, we can be constructive through doing things virtually. While strengthening our traditional services to com accommodate all community members, as the city, I think this should have said, is becoming smarter. We have been smart, Mr. Mayor, we are becoming smarter. LIS ensures that communities are not left behind and fully contribute towards smart citizens. Program director, the Youth Digital Skills Program is also being launched today. And I think that is a good thing that is happening in Nortasa, which is part of the city's smart city vision and strategy and LIS e-learning, focusing on youth employability, and bridging the digital divide amongst all citizens. It will also enable citizens to gain access to the knowledge, the economy, the digital econ economy, and encourage entrepreneurship. E-learning in library services is not just about online learning. It is the support provided by the libraries through el electronic tools, such as computers, tablets, facilities such as e-learning classrooms. LIS is prioritizing digital skills in response to COVID-19 and the fourth industrial revolution. The employment of 107 youth interns on a short-term contract of 18 months is aimed at ensuring that young people are not left behind. In terms of requisite digital skills, the youth will be mentored in various library facilities by experienced librarians and will receive training both internally and externally. And I hope that we are grasping that. The youth will be mentored in various library facilities by experienced librarians and will receive training both internally and externally. Each group has been given an opportunity to work on a project that will form part of their portfolio when they exit the program. Some of the interns have worked on the library website that will be showcased today. We are so proud of our program as it continues to show positive results. Out of the 30 graduates, interns, five already resigned as they got permanent employment opportunities in various sectors. And I think that is very good because we always complain about our young people unable to find jobs. So now they can have the training and then they can find the jobs. 
We will therefore continue to mentor and train these young people so that they have the required work experience needed by the industry. Once again, Executive Mayor and Program Director, the Noordgesag Library showcases the new digital technologies and services that the city's libraries will present. It's a, it's a model library that will be used as a benchmark. We've waited a long time and we are getting the best. For all new library facilities in the city, our aim is to ensure that we also provi provide these services even in our old libraries by modifying library spaces to accommodate the new technologies. I'm happy to hear that, Sisna Ubuntu, so that the one in the city center, the one where I studied and where we used to go when we were younger, um, I'm happy to hear that it will happen to all the old ones. Noordgesag Library boasts one of the biggest e-learning centers with over 40 public computers providing access to free Wi-Fi. The center has a private e-classroom which will allow community training sessions to be conducted without interference of other users. The center therefore presents gaming spaces for kids and youth to develop problem solving and critical thinking skills needed by the youth in the fourth industrial revolution era. Program director to support skills and entrepreneurship development, LIS is embarking on collaborating with various organizations and institutions of higher learning. One of the recent collaborations being finalized is with the University of Johannesburg in efforts to develop to the development of maker spaces within our libraries with the primary aim of enhancing citizens to gain digital skills while enhancing their entrepreneur, entrepreneurial ability by effectively engaging in the digital economy. None of this would be possible, Mr. Mayor, and everybody present, without partnership. We can't do it alone. As government, we have never said that we stand alone. We need to do it with communities. I've always said since I came into community development, the legacy that we want to leave is a legacy that communities need to own all their facilities. Communities need to take responsibility of their facilities because when you buy a house, you ensure that your house is secured. Jy is jaloer, jy maak nie dat iemand anders kom inbreek of jou goed kom breek nie. You ensure that it is safe. And that is what we want you, to take ownership of everything. When we cut the ribbon today, we cut it and it was cut for the use of the communities. Not for the mayor, not for me, not for the breadwinner, not for anybody, but for you in the community. In closing, I would like to make the following acknowledgements. The Mzanzi Online Project for the provision of, of computers, gaming consoles, etc. Trinity, an NGO who donated children's library play furniture. Gauteng Province, thank you for your conditional grant that provided the budget for the appointment of youth interns and procurement of ICT equipment. I thank you all and enjoy your library. Oh, thank you, thank you, MMC. <clears throat> I had it tough under my MMC when I was a small mayor. <laughs> um, before I ask uh, MMC Mfukwe to come and introduce our executive mayor, I just want to acknowledge the chief of staff in the office of the, of the mayor. I almost said alderman, my tongue, but it's been an MMC, a councillor, alderman, welcome chief of staff. Um, if I have missed anybody else, um, all protocol observed. Um, Emerson Fikwe, please come and 
Brother Anis, thank you. I just don't know what to say. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. I am Councillor Matsiri Somfigo. I don't know these other names that I'm being called upon. And I'm sad to introduce the mayor, uh, Councillor Julie D. Matongo. You are introduced, the executive mayor of the city of Johannesburg. Um, I don't know what to say, but please come to the podium. This is the mayor of Johannesburg I present to you. Thank you very much, uh, MMC for Finance, for the introduction. Now you see me carrying papers here. In, in a library where we're told we're moving in the direction of the fourth industrial revolution. So I am old school. And when I saw the president saying, they stole it. Where's my laptop? I thought uh, I must always have my plan B. And the plan B helps me because I have the paper and I also have a pen. Now it makes life easy because when the MMC says the United Nations says this, I, I take off from my, I don't have to say it because she has already said it. But uh, it's indeed quite a very fulfilling day and fulfilling moment on our part. There is a city that uh, we can today be here and um, ensure the facilities open. Uh, as the former MMC for Finance, I'm sure MMC and also would have always come in the budget process and say we need money to open up the libraries and make them functional, including other facilities. And I would have said at the time, I think we don't have enough. I think we have money to deal with COVID. Can we wait a little bit? Uh, but then fortunately for us, in the adjustment budget last year and the budget now, we have been able, MMC Finance, to allocate the money because it's always a tough balancing act if you are an MMC for finance to say, what do you fund? Uh, do you fund a, a swimming pool as opposed to a library? Uh, those are the tough choices that we've got to make. Now, as Councillor Morane, the MMC deployed in the region would have said, some of you would know that uh, I grew up in Dube in Soweto. Uh, just not far from here. So my home is about equal distance from two hostels, the Dube and the Nansfield hostels, MMC Makuba. Now, when we grew up, hostels were for one gender, uh, and one gender only, which is the males, and the two hostels were men, were for men. So we grew up hearing many stories from the hostels, some funny and some were very scary. A story is told about an elderly man who receives a letter from his rural home in Guazulu Natal. Because the man could not read, he asks a younger man to read the letter for him. It turns out that the letter has some intimate and personal details shared between a lover and the loved person. The old man then orders the young man. Meaning, close your ears, young men, and don't ears drop on what the elderly are speaking about. The old man somehow thinks that if the young man close his ears, his conversation with his partner will remain a private affair. But on a serious note, ladies and gentlemen, the story we have just narrated captures in a small yet powerful way the essence of why literacy is a human right and not a privilege. 
So we don't want our children to grow up to be the, like that old man who could not read nor write. Program director, uh, my former colleague in the Department of Community Development, I used to work for the city and I worked with him. Uh, how things have changed. Uh, that now I'm the executive mayor. <laughs> MMC is deployed in the region, MMC Makuba, MMC Murano. Uh, thank you very much for holding the fort, our host. I know you are very passionate about uh, community development programs and activities. Councillor Dame, um, I know you have been crying in the chambers there of council. I think people don't know. They say the councillor is useless. The library is standing for four years, not open. Uh, people don't know the battles that you fight with the MMCs for finance to say, bring the money, let's open the facility. So we thank you for your continued uh, oversight over the executive. If I have to mention everybody, I'm sure we can take the whole day, which we don't have. But safe to say uh, senior government officials that are here, so there's a colleague of mine that I worked with in the Gauteng Department of Sports. Uh, you know, we worked there at some point. Mom Elizabeth is here. It's principals and educators and uh, the young ones. I was worried when the program director said, let the young ones move from here. We will find you there at the kids, what do you call it? Kiddies Library. I, I would have wanted them to be here to hear the story of the old man <laughs> and why it's important for them to be here uh, if, if at all possible spend the entire day here in the library. But I think most importantly members of the community of Not Kharsek, it's quite a, an honor and a privilege to be with yourselves uh, on this occasion. And I was saying to myself sitting there that looking back at the recent looting and the damage caused uh, during the looting. We can really be proud of the community here who have ensured that the facility remains like it is today. So it's important that we at least have a round of applause for the community. <laughs> now, I, I know community members always use these types of platforms to raise issues. We are happy that we have members of our sister organization, the Patriotic Alliance. Uh, I will report to President there that you represented the party very well. Uh, we are very happy that you are here. Shows that you have uh, on Spizani. That, that's what they say. They say salute on Spizani. Our program director, our program is uh, threefold as the MMC would have said. Firstly, obviously, opening officially the library, but secondly, commemorating uh, the national, the International uh, Literacy Day, and obviously launching the program around libraries and information services digital youth skills program. It is appropriate that uh, we open this library on the 54th annual International Literacy Day when the world shines the light on the critical skill many of us take for granted the ability to read and write. It is hard to imagine yourself looking at a page with words on it and having no idea what is going on. One's own sense of dignity is tied in very deep ways to being able to read and write. To state it negatively, the inability to read and write can have profound implications on the dignity and the rights of those for whom the written message is meaningless. It is like having eyes but remaining in a permanently dark room, unable to see anything. It can be demeaning and disempowering. It means that whatever other rights are written in the Constitution, whatever words of encouragement and of consolation written in the scriptures of your own faith group, all of those are unavailable to you until someone else intervenes and reads for you. One could add, 
uh, on a lighter note, uh, MMC Finance, one could add that uh, even if such a person were to have a winning lottery ticket in their pocket, it would be a worthless piece of paper until and unless someone is able to interpret for them what the numbers on the paper say. It can be humiliating to the elder person who depends on others for the basics that are written for everyone to see. The phrase that they use there in Alexandra, Ubuza Ibas Ebaliwe. Why are you asking the obvious? It's written there. Ubuza Ibas Ebaliwe. Now comes to mind referring to someone who's asking a question whose answer is obvious because it is written for everyone to see except for those who cannot read. That is why today we must take a moment to reflect on how we as families and communities can help such people overcome this situational blindness. We have to help free our friends, neighbors, and loved ones from the chains of illiteracy. Without being able to read and write, this library we have waited so many years to open may as well be just another meaningless building. Being able to read and write gives us a sense of being part of something greater. It gives us the sense that we, we are always just about to discover something new, exciting and empowering. A library is a physical representation of the potential to know more and to do more with that knowledge. This library is a model regional library that embraces change growth and innovation. Now the United Nations uh, Educational Science and Scientific and Cultural Organization, UNESCO, like the MMC has said, estimates that there is many as 773 million young people and adults across the world who lack the basic literacy skills today. One our most recent statistics here in South Africa says that we contribute 4.4 million to this number. In today's terms, being unable to navigate the industrial revolution can be a form of illiteracy. Libraries are critical in correcting this unfortunate situation. The public libraries are in a phase of rapid change and must respond to demands of the fourth industrial revolution. With the increasing complexities of society and the rapid development of technology and communication, the public library has become a multi-purpose agency with multiple roles covering the areas of information, lifelong learning, recreation and leisure, culture and research. Now the city of Johannesburg, MMC Mfikwe, must keep up. It must stay relevant. All the time, I, I, I want to check if what they are saying is correct. When we were told uh, there's free Wi-Fi here, it's working. I said, before I say this thing, let me test. I said that I tested. I went in there, it connected. So we are happy that the things that we are saying are here, are indeed here. Because you know, sometimes officials say to you, there's free Wi-Fi here. And then you ask a community member, they say, no, that thing is not working. So it's a problem, but we, we are happy that you are keeping up. Our program director as a city, we are concerned about the high number of young people who are unemployed. The program, the Youth Digital Skills Program, uh, which is part of what we are doing today, launching, will focus on youth employability and bridging the digital divide among all citizens. Now the shadow of the COVID pandemic looms large. It affects every area of our life. As a result, the pandemic has been a reminder of the importance of literacy. Rumor mongers have been as active as the virus itself in spreading falsehood about COVID, how it is spread and how it can be prevented. Being able to read and having access to facilities such as this library where individuals can at their leisure walk in, find credible information from credible sources about the pandemic and can be 
If can, these institutions can therefore be effective tools in the fight against the COVID pandemic. Literacy therefore is central to a human-centered recovery from the COVID-19 crisis. Now I'm sure you'll be happy to know, because we are politicians, the following one. As we approach the local government elections in less than two months from now, libraries serve as an important role for those seeking to read further so that they can make informed political choices. So we're not here to grandstand, but we're saying the library will help you to say, let me read the manifesto of those who say, was Bison. Let me read the manifesto of those who say they are a people's movement and, and make the choice for myself. But this is all dependent, firstly, on the ability to read and write. So we're trying to make the point. Yes, you've got the facility, you've got everything, but if you don't have the ability to read and write, it then becomes a problem. Now, the library, the library itself is strategically placed to serve the communities of and the children of Norgesek, Orlando East, Deep Roof, and Pennyville. And I think it's an important point to make. Uh, it's not the library of only the people of Norgesek. Was growing up in Dube, we didn't have a swimming pool. We, we knew that the swimming pool is in Orlando. Then we went to Orlando. And when we were in Orlando, the children and the youth from Norgesek, Deep Roof, and all the other areas met with us that we played there. So let's have that sense of community, that sense of belonging, so that we don't hear stories tomorrow to say the children of Pennyville have been barred from using the facility. Uh, we would not ha like to have that kind of a situation. So it's, it's, it is indeed a very great day for us uh, in its design itself, the library is a response to the call by the Gauteng Library and Archival Services view of building what they call libraries of the future, or libraries for the future. As we open this library, we hand it over to you as the community to ensure that it serves the purpose it was meant to. It is you, members of the community, who must jealously, against, jealously guard against those criminal minds Remember, too, that anything that is done to this library is done to your community and against your children. We expect you to take care, and you have already demonstrated during the looting that no, we will. Uh, so we are very happy that you have helped us. I, I, I have asked uh, MMC Moerane, MMC Makuba, MMC Arnolds, working with the city manager, to return uh, to this place because, uh, as I said, when people see you, they say, let's raise our issues. So if there are issues about uh, people who were working here, they were not paid, contractors, this and that, who are not happy that we were not invited on time, why is it not a big thing on TV? I thought we should have been on TV uh, so that uh, people can see that uh, our area is, uh, is growing and developing. So I've asked them to come back working with the staff from Comdev to sit with the community leaders, to listen what are the problems uh, that they have picked up, uh, the things that uh, might make us not to have what we want to have, have our children and all of us uh, benefiting from what the library offers. So they have committed, they will come and deal with those issues but thank you very much. It's indeed a, a fulfilling day. You know, as politicians, we, we've been going around since my, my appointment, seeing bad things in the city, seeing uh, raw sewer, potholes all over the place, and we have been working to fix them. As we see them, we fix them. We have not had an opportunity to, to be in a celebratory environment like this one. Thanks to you. This is the first thing that at least we can say we're proud of. Uh, it's a sign of a government at work. Thank you very much.
Okay, thank you, Executive Mayor. And also thank you to the MMC for that word um, of encouragement and also the words uh, that ex expressed what we are doing here today. I think maybe I must just acknowledge um, the director in the office of the MMC, Ms. Darlene James. Uh, you are acknowledged, ma'am. Uh, my apologies for the Mr. Ch 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 Mr. Mayor. No, no. I, I wrote it there in the speech uh, not to acknowledge Darlene, <laughs> but to, to harm to harp on the point made by the MMC, that government on its own cannot do everything. And I think it will be remiss of us from the office of the executive mayor not to acknowledge the various partners that have been working with you, helping with uh, all the equipment and everything. I think it's quite important that we always say uh, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, Maya. I think that is very, very important um, because as a, as, a, as a sector, we can't do without partnerships. I, I think it's a fact. Um, it's very difficult to speak after the mayor and, and MMC has spoken. But I just want to share one thing with, with ourselves as a community. You know, there's a concept, uh, MMC. It's called urban acupuncture. Now, if you understand acupuncture, it's a, it's a Japanese healing uh, method. So when there's a, an ailment in one of your muscles, they insert a small little needle and it heals the entire muscle. So I'm hoping this building will act as that particular uh, uh, aspect so that it goes beyond this particular, um, uh, it's, it's a flagship um, facility, it's absolutely stunning. And I'm, I know it will go beyond just, just uh, being a library. So thank you for that. Just before we call on Councillor Dami to come and say a word of thanks, maybe just um, a last announcement. After Councillor Dami has come to say a, a word of thanks, we're going to wait we are going to allow the executive mayor and the MMC um, just to, to leave first. Mayor, we'll take you on a short little tour of the facility um, just to, to, to show you what we've said is in effect there. So, so, so can I please ask that we then allow the mayor and the MMCs to leave first, uh, together with uh, the director and myself. And then what we will do is and then the um, councillor will join us and then, and then we will close. Um, uh, councillor Dami, over to you. Um, good evening, everybody. <laughs> it, that's nice to see you laughing. <laughs> so, um, uh, good afternoon, everybody. Thanks, uh, Program Director, MD. Let me thank our Mayor of City of Jobek, my colleague, Councillor Jolie Di Matonga, and your Mayoral Committees to take time out of your busy schedule to open Norfese Hall. This is a historical day indeed. MMC Margaret Arnold for Community Development, MMC Moerani, a breadwinner, MMC Sidin Figwe, MMC of Transport, you are all welcome and thank you very much. Uh, let me also thank um, the Director of Libraries, Region D Director, Ms. Salome, Thanks to City of Joburg officials, leaders of communities from different structures. Also reiterate what the mayor has said to apologize for short notice. I know I'm not a good counselor as I'm standing here because of the short notice, mayor. You'll make my community to kill me, I must say in front of them. But thank you very much to apologize for that. Um, I must say it is very important for our future leaders, our children, to have these facilities. And this is not just a library, MMC Arnold. This is a state of the art library built with the vision of corridors of freedom by our MEC of human settlement, uh, Pakistan. That was the vision of the city. How ironic it is that today we celebrate International Literacy Day. Also, the state South Africa, MNC, Arnold and Mayor have reported that in 2017, 47% of our children never 
read a book. Never our children. Now we're talking about our future leaders. We're talking about the children who this country, it is in their hands. They cannot read. So this facility, we want to make sure community of North Hesek and the surroundings that it is utilized properly. Our children must come here, our learners must come here and study. They must come here and do their homework, assisted by community members. I must say to my community is very, very uh, uh, organized. There are community members that want to assist, but we have been waiting for this library to be open. And I'm going to sleep tonight as a counselor. Because corner to corner, Councillor Vanier Makons, the library of Vanier, it, is, it was a thorny thing in me that to see this library being open and our children utilize it properly so. And as you can see, ever since it was built, it is still intact. Nothing is broken. To show that this community was the part when it was started with JRA, this community have ownership on this facility. And this community want to take care of this facility. And thank you very much. I, uh, like I said, Ms. Arnold, this is not just a library. It got many programs that will empower our children. We are indeed in the fourth industrial revolution where paper one day will never be used, where our children want to access Wi-Fi easily. Gone are those days that you need to take your CV by hand and do anything and apply. You must go to internet and apply and send your CV immediately. And this facility indeed will address our problems. So without wasting time, let me thank everybody to come out. Mayor, thank you very much. And let me thank also the rabbi uh, 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 pastor who prayed for us. Mayor, thank you very much. And we promise you, as the community of North Hesek and surrounding all 29, we are going to take care of our facilities. But I must say, Mayor, like I've asked you a question, I must ask to say, MMC, the security of this facility must be beefed up. Because I've got task team members within the community that are patrolling. I must acknowledge them. They are here who take care of that. The facilities are not being broken in even the school, everything. So like I told you, my community is very organized. They take, off the, take care of their facilities. And please, the security must also beef up because we want our future leaders to utilize. This cannot be a white elephant. I was asked several times, and thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Dami. Um, I, think, I think, colleagues, um, that brings us to the end of the formal part of the proceedings of today. Um, like I have indicated, and I mean, firstly, before I close, I think we need to salute the community of the of North Um I think what Councillor said is very, very important. Um, this facility is still intact. Um, no vandalism, and, and we can't do that without yourselves. You know, we can put more security, but the point is, if the community do not take ownership of the facility. We are fighting a losing battle, so we salute you as, as the community of North Hesse. I think, um, like I said, that brings us to the end of the formal program. I'm going to ask that we remain seated. I'm going to ask the Executive Mayor, um, MMC Arnolds, uh, MMC Morani, MMC Makuba, um, Councillor Dami, Director? Okay, so, so you'll, start, you'll follow the Director. Uh, yeah, so um, that brings us to a close of today's proceedings. Thank you very much for coming. Thanks.
community, community members, just, just the last point. Um, just uh, in the interest of time, we are going to take the, the, the measure through quickly. There will be an opportunity for you also to, to go through. We'll, we'll have a, a bit of a tour with yourselves. So if you want to remain, uh, you, you are free to do that. Um, it's just in the interest of time that we, we're just doing this particular thing as it is. Thank you very much. Eh? Thanks.